I don't have a t-shirt on, man. Uh, thank you all very much for coming out today. Um, Atheist Utah has been a really big part of my life for the better part of the last six or seven years. Um, I joined as a regular member uh, six or seven years ago. Um, and I don't know, probably like a lot of you, I, I was a little fearful of going out and actually attending any events. Um, at first I didn't First, I didn't even realize that Atheist in Utah was a thing, right? For the longest time, I thought that I was I was the only atheist in Utah. And it wasn't until, I don't know, I was just sitting at the computer one day and I thought, hey, I should run a Google check and see if there are any other atheists here in Utah. Lo well, and behold, there was. Uh, the, the first thing that I found for Atheist in Utah was a meetup group. And so I joined the meetup group and lurked in there for probably three or four months. I'd hit RSVP on going to coffee chats and think, oh, I don't know, it's probably just gonna be a bunch of weirdos that go. <laughs> and I thought, well, I'm probably one of those weirdos anyway. Um, so I would RSVP and then I would cancel and then later, you know, post an apology. Uh, this was back when Zach and Terry was running a lot of the coffee chats and some of the, some of the just skeptical gatherings. Um, I would post an apology saying, hey, sorry I didn't show up. You know, I, I had other things going on, mainly that I was too chicken shit to show up. Um, first one that I actually took was attending a Pride Festival, or the Pride Parade with Atheists of Utah when uh, Joel was still president for Atheists of Utah. And that actually is where I ran into Tracy again since graduating high school. And she was hot and cranky, so. It was basically just me saying, hey, you're Tracy Starr, right? Yeah. Did you go to Murray High? Yes. Okay, well, I'll leave you alone then. <laughs> um, but Atheist of Utah has come a long way in that time. Um, since, I be since I first became a dues-paying member and then was a member of the Board of Trustees for three years, uh, when I first joined, the organization had an outdated website a uh, very small Facebook group, and a meetup.com account that I told you about. That was mainly used for posting uh, coffee chats and semi-annual parties, and that was about it. They didn't, they didn't really have a whole lot of other activities or things going on. Um, when, I, when I first joined, we did not have two signs on State Street in Salt Lake City with the organization's name on them, marking our section of the state's about the highway cleanup program. There was no official Facebook page, there was no Twitter account. There was no annual camping trip. No annual summer barbecue existed either. We had no family ice cream social event. In fact, we had little to no family events at all. When I joined Atheist Utah, the organization had never hosted an event to allow a mass resignation from the LDS Church. We've since organized two of them and even had American Atheist President David Silverman come out and speak during one of them. We have had members appear on billboard campaigns for American Atheists and the Coalition of Reason. Uh, David Silverman has returned to Utah for events twice since the mass resignation when he first came out here. Once for the American Atheist Convention in 2014, where Atheists of Utah was a proud supporting organization that worked with American Atheists to ensure the convention's success. And most recently, because I badgered him into coming out for a speaking event as part of his book tour, I wasn't originally on, on his schedule to come out here, but I saw that his schedule was posted and I said, what, no Utah, come on, man. So eventually ended up talking him to come out here and, and it ended up being, I believe, the largest turnout for any of the book signing events on the tour that he's, that he's doing now. So I think it was a very successful event. Um, Part of that maybe because I was also able to get an appearance for him on X96's radio from Hell Show the morning of his speaking event. Uh, he was a lot more fire brandy than I think they anticipated, so I don't know that they'll have him back. <laughs> it, was, it was exciting, it was a lot of fun. Um, does anybody here, uh, I know there are a few of you out there that have been with the organization for a while. Does anybody remember the old Atheist of Utah logo? The, Great. Great. Yeah, which one? Yeah. Well, the, the most recent one before our, our current redesign, the little 
we just had the state of Utah that kind of askew, and so that was that was the logo when um, when we decided to have it redesigned. Uh, so we we got a new design for the Atheists of Utah logo. Um, we've also completely redesigned the website. I don't know if anybody ever visit anybody in here ever visited the old website. It was an old WordPress thing that was fairly difficult to update. Didn't look very good. But, um, we worked with a member to help us create a new website for that. Um, how about Salt Lake Valley Atheists? Anybody been around long enough to remember that one? Maybe. Grant remembers. Uh, I also served on the board for, well, they didn't even have a board. I was just the president for Salt Lake Valley Atheists. And since then, I'm happy that we were able to merge the two groups uh, together into one group and continue on under the name of Atheists of Utah. We now have an Amazon Smile account that Felicia mentioned, uh, where people can help raise funds for the organization anytime they do their shopping online through Amazon. Uh, since joining Atheists of Utah, the organization has won awards from Q Salt Lake, uh, Restore Our Humanity, and won Affiliate Organization of the Year from American Atheists. We started participating in the Light the Night Walk event through the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society. We now participate in the Salt Lake Pride Festival, the Provo Pride Festival, and now the Ogden Pride Festival as well. The annual Winter Gala was also started after I joined Atheists of Utah, thanks to Grant. Uh, this year we raised $3,567 that we donated to Planned Parenthood. If elected, a couple things I'd like to change during my term as a board member would be to move the Thursday coffee chat to a better location. Uh, Mestizo has been awesome to work with. They've been great for so many years. They've provided us a space. They've, they've allowed us to be atheists in there openly for, for a very long time. But we've, we outgrew the space at least two years ago. The parking is just getting worse and worse. Uh, I would like to find a better location where we can actually have conversations inside, where during the winter it's not too hot and during the summer it's also not too hot. I don't know how that works out. Um, and somewhere where people can actually park and get to the coffee chat. Uh, I'd also like to bring back the monthly brunch for those who can't make it out to something as often as, as we hold events. You know, we've got I think three different weekly coffee chats now. We do the parties, we've got the gala, the camping trip, the family social, all of those. Um, one thing that has kind of fallen by the wayside was that we used to do a monthly brunch where people would get together, I think it was on the first Sunday of every month, and we would occasionally have speakers come out, even if it was just a local speaker, somebody uh, who's doing very cool work locally. Um, I'd like to bring those back. Um, Okay, so yes, Atheists of Utah has come a long way since I joined the organization. While I started some of the things I mentioned today, the truth is that none of them would happen without the support, and without the support of a team dedicated to the success of the organization, and from the support and volunteer efforts of our membership as well. Uh, without you guys, Atheists of Utah would not exist, so I'd like to personally thank each of you for coming out today and for your continued support. Uh, thank you. Anybody have any questions for me? Yes, Peter? You said that those are things that you want to do if you're on the board again. Why haven't you done those if you've been on the board for the last couple of months? Uh, as you know, the board has gone through a pretty rough transition over the last six months. We've been ironing out a whole lot of things. Um, we have begun initial work on some of these things. We've been looking at different locations to move the coffee chat. Uh, we've also been looking at different locations to start holding the brunch. So we have started working on these things. Well, we haven't been able to find somewhere that's suitable yet. If you have any ideas, if you can find a place that would be suitable, we'd love to hear about it. Uh, if you can find a place that has decent parking, that you know, would, have, would allow us a separate space for, from seven to nine where we're not going to bug the rest of their customers. Yeah. Yeah, that can fit you know, between 30 and 50 people, depending on the turnout that we have out there. Any other questions? All right. Oh. <laughs> yeah, the, the Sizzler was not, uh, well, I think the Sizzler closed for a reason, part of it being good, yeah. 
ceiling tiles and water dripping on the people's food below was, was not a good thing. Yes, Peter. Um, I'm rerunning again now because I would like some more continuity on the board. I know that it's gone through a lot of turmoil lately. I mean, how many different board members have we had just in the last three years? Um, I'm, it, it's gotten to a point where I think the, the existing board members all get along really well. Uh, we, we have a lot of focus, we have a lot of determination, we know what we would like to do going forward. Um, and I thought that the board had been in, in decent hands before, but there was a lot of a lot of stuff that should have been done differently. Um, I think the current board is, it has been working together really well and we're ready to move forward and take the organization in a lot more positive direction and get a lot more people to come out and, and normalize atheism a lot more here in Utah and nationally. Another one? <laughs> Two bits of the board are still on there. How come they haven't been doing those things? How come they haven't been doing those things? Well, you're saying that there was so much turmoil and all the board members weren't doing all these things. Two of the same people are still there. I'm sorry, which things do you think that I that, that I said they were not doing? Just make a comment that all the turmoil and things weren't being done because board members were on there, yet the two of them are still on the board. So I'm not sure what you mean by I am not sure what your question is. Yes, that never mind. Okay. Maybe maybe try to ask it again. We're gonna do the board QA, so if you can Think of another way to rephrase it, or maybe beat, it, beat me over the head with it a little bit more, and we'll understand a little better. Yes, Andy? Are we rescheduling the ice cream social Yes, we do plan to reschedule the ice cream social because that's always been a big hit for everybody. Uh, unfortunately, when we tried to do it earlier this year, the weather just, it was not an ice cream social kind of day, so. <laughs> so we did have to postpone it, but yeah, we will be rescheduling. Anything else? Tama? 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 Okay. Thanks.